I'm not saying it'll get to orbit, but I am guaranteeing excitement. Won't <laughs> be boring. So Elon is guaranteeing that the first orbital Starship test will not be boring, and I'm sure it won't be boring. A big question is when will it be? We've been asking this question now for over 18 months, but we have another clue as to when it could be. In fact, to my surprise, I made a meme tweet and just three hours later, Elon liked my tweet. Here is your proof. So it kind of makes me wonder, is that like a confirmation that the Starship orbital test flight will be in fact on 420? It's funny, I, I was like, man, I should make a meme of this. You know, memes do pretty well on Twitter. So I just really quickly picked that photo. I didn't really put much time into it but um, it was pretty cool to see that he liked that. And he did kind of signal on his own tweet that they're looking toward the end of April. Luckily today, I was able to get into the studio and have a horizontal uh, landscape mode here instead of on my phone. I do have my walker with me, so I will be resting my hands as needed, but I usually just kind of wait one foot and um, it's exhausting to set up for these videos. But making the videos helps keep me out of a deep state of depression. So let's go. And Elon was recently interviewed March 7th. So I was still in the hospital one day out of surgery. So I'm not really catching up with that interview until now, but we learned some more details in that Morgan Stanley interview. This is a very difficult program. Very difficult. In fact, Starship has two and a half times the thrust of the Saturn V. So when it reaches orbit, it will be by far the biggest rocket to reach orbit. It will also be the first fully reusable rocket ever. The key to uh, extending life beyond Earth is a fully and rapidly reusable orbital rocket. This is a very hard problem given the constraints of Earth, a thick atmosphere and strong gravity. Elon says that it's literally barely possible to do this, which is why it hasn't been done before but someone's got to try. We we're getting close for our first orbital t attempt of, of Starship, um, hopefully in the next month or so. Unfortunately, we've been hearing that for a long time, but something tells me he actually means it this time. Now, during the test flight, the colossal booster will separate about three minutes after liftoff. That booster will land in the Gulf of Mexico. The ship will fly in space around Earth at an altitude of over 150 miles, and then it'll splash down off the coast of Hawaii. Elon tweeted saying that yes, Starship will be ready to launch in a few weeks, and then that launch will depend on license approval. He writes, assuming that takes a few weeks, first launch attempt will be near end of third week of April, AKA, AKA, weed day. Now, Elon says he hopes there's an above 50% chance of reaching orbit on the first attempt, but he says because they're building a series of starships in South Texas, he thinks they'll have an 80% chance of reaching orbit this year. And of course, we're still pretty early into 2023. Then he says it'll probably be a few more years to achieve full and rapid reusability. And like in many of his interviews, Elon says this cannot be stressed enough again. It is the profound breakthrough that is needed to extend life beyond Earth. It lowers the cost of access to space by orders of magnitude. Let's say there were no airplanes that were reusable. Um, how expensive would air flight be? It would be insane. You'd have to buy a new airplane every time you flew somewhere and you have to tow a small airplane behind you for the return flight. He says, assuming things go well, the vehicle could make life on Mars real. He thinks this is a great filter any civilization has to pass through. Does this civilization, our civilization, become multiplanetary or not? He goes on further to say that this is one of the elements of the Fermi paradox, and if we can further improve spaceflight, we can not only become multiplanetary, but multi-stellar. I think we may discover that there are many long dead one planet civilizations um, we don't want to be one of those <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to be one of those lame one planet civilizations. <laughs> please <laughs> now sorry for the glare in my glasses um <laughs> believe me it was kind of hard to set up for this video just even like walking around kind of gets me a little bit out of breath however I wanted to point out that this is actually the shirt that I was wearing when I broke my leg. I swear, if I don't come out of this with like crazy triceps, um, I'll be pretty sad. <laughs> but the reason I point this shirt out is because I had just bought this because I liked the color. 
So I was wearing it that day. Ryan Tanaka and I were earlier interviewing people at the park. And then obviously the femur snap happened. And in the hospital, they had to completely cut off my yoga pants and toss those. So I kept this on because I didn't want to have two, two pieces of clothing thrown away. So uh, I was a little like spooky wearing it today because yeah, it's not associated with a great memory, but I got to salvage it because um, it's not super tight. So I slept in it the first night and yeah. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. It really does help me to keep making content. Um, it might be a little slower than usual. In an ideal world, I would have gotten this out a little bit sooner, but uh, it was pretty cool to see Elon like that tweet. And um, I realized that he's commented on my tweets now in January, February, and now he's liked one in March. So again, I'm not trying to like come off as uber fangirl, but as someone who's interviewed a lot of people over a decade, uh, I, you know, having an interview with Elon, I think would mean a lot more to me than it would to many people. It would mean a lot to anyone. Like I understand that, but it would be really great to interview one of the most influential people of our time. So, I mean, if I have to interview Elon with a broken leg, hell yeah, I would interview Elon with a broken leg. I don't care the circumstances. Okay. And that goes for a lot of people that I want to interview. In fact, in the comments right now, list your top three dream interviews of people that you would want to interview. I would love to interview Jeff Bezos. We don't really ever hear from him that much. So anyway, just me kind of, you know, thinking about things and having way too much time to think. I am working on a video about how I broke my femur and I'm kind of like going all in on the reporter angle. <laughs> I'm not just interviewing myself, I'm interviewing some other people and so, uh, you're gonna have to wait a little bit, but I promise it's gonna be good. Like I called my dad the other day, he wanted to check in on me and I was telling him about my vision for this femur story for YouTube and he was just like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I can't wait to see it. And I'm like, well, good. We can have something to be excited about out of this whole mess. Since we're on the theme of Starship, I wanted to share with you this Starship shuffle game that I was sent in the mail and no, I am not sponsored by them, but I have a lot of time on my hands right now. And I thought that uh, you might like to open it with me. And this, if you're a Starship fan, you're, you'll probably really appreciate this game because it's based off of, you know, all of the people that you probably follow that are covering Starship. They're like characters in the game based in Starbase, Texas. Apparently you can have one to five players, it takes about 30 minutes and it's ages 14 plus. And I tell you yesterday, um, I went to check my mail for the first time. It took me 35 minutes round trip to walk, traverse two sets of stairs there and back, actually three sets. One of them was like two steps with no railing. So one of the interesting things is that when you're not used to having, you know, a disability or something that's kind of hindering you, you don't really notice things that now it's, since I'm using a walker, I'm noticing, wow, these sidewalks are extremely sloped or there should be railings here, or this is really uneven. So it gives me a lot of compassion and empathy for people who struggle with this every day. Um, it's frustrating when the world isn't ADA compliant. Okay, Starship Shuffle, as you saw, it took me five years to unwrap it. So we are opening this on camera for the first time. Just read the instructions. So yeah, this looks really fun. Game components, there's rocket cards, development cards, launch cards, blueprint cards, accident cards, status cards, timeline cards, reference cards, KSP mode. I don't know, maybe I can get someone to play the game with me. Maybe that'll be an, another video. So anyway, uh, this looks like a pretty cool game. Let me know if you are more curious about this and maybe I can get someone, maybe someone like who's in the space community to play it with me. So let me know if you're interested in that. But thank you to Aerospace Games, Kyle and Curtis Aarons for sending me this game. Um, I can't wait to play it. And yeah, a lot of you guys have sent some amazing stuff. In fact, I got this book 
that I need to read, the Elon Musk mission, making the future awesome. This is cool to me because it has contributions from one of my friends, Dr. Know-It-All. And thank you to one of my subscribers, Nicholas, for sending this to me. I, I just, aside from the GoFundMe, like the mail that's been sent to my UPS box has been really cool to see. So thank you to everyone who's been supporting me. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's still a little bit hard, but I feel like I'm doing pretty good considering the circumstances. And hopefully you enjoyed this video and um, you know, hopefully I'm also able to somehow get down to Starbase if it actually is in fact 420. Thought, why not record right now? Um, this is definitely going in the bloopers. <laughs> but you can see, I have come up with a method. So when I need to move stuff, like this camera and tripod, because I need to sit down to show you something, uh, sometimes I just do it little by little. So if I have like a cup or something, I'll put it on the ground and then kind of bend over my walker <laughs> and, uh, and scoot it a little bit and, you know, it's amazing how you can get a lot of things done. It just might be kind of slow. Everything is just really slowed down right now. And as a person who moves fast all the time, well, this is an adjustment, but it's kind of always been hard for me to like not rush. So sometimes it's kind of good to not rush, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna get it to my level. I feel like more and more of these videos are gonna become pretty vloggy because I'm bored and lonely. <laughs> and I just wanna show you the process, man. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down. Thank goodness I have a couch. Okay. Oof. You know, it's pretty crazy that only 11 days ago, I had surgery. All right. So one of the things too is like when I sit down, I have to keep one leg straight, obviously, and keep the other one bent. And then I have this cool strap that I can just pick up, lift, and rotate. Funny enough, I almost didn't take the strap home, which would have been uh, terrible. So, <laughs> how do I like look presentable like this? This is very difficult, whatever. I'm just gonna have to zoom in. I'm just gonna have to zoom in. All right, so 